Yeah, so two chassids in a pod. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> two chassids uh, in a pod. Myself? Yeah. I have no personal identity. <laughs> um, no, um, I, I did Aliyah about seven, eight years ago from uh, Belgium. I joined the army. Wow. Uh, I, I actually come from a religious background, more than orthodox, but uh, I went over there pretty early in, in the army. I, I did put film on in the army, but actually lost my film in the army. And I basically stopped putting it until three years ago when I started doing Chuva again in Poland. When I was doing some traveling, I lived all around Europe. And uh, yeah, I came back and came to Tzfat and started becoming a Hasid. Before you know it, here we are. Wow. <laughs> and I'm married, Bo Hashem. I just had a baby boy. Mazel tov. Yeah, I heard. I mean, we, we uh, yeah. rescheduled for Simchas. That's the best thing, you yeah? know? Best reason. Yeah. <laughs> Should only have Nachas. Yeah. Myself, I was, uh, I grew up in Miami, South Africa, UK, wow. um, Brazil a bit, back to Miami and I made Aliyah 10 years, nearly 11 years ago. Wow. Um, I was also in the army, also grew up somewhat religious, wow. um, and went off to Derek in the army, and um, in the schut of the Rav in Gedalia fence there, I made tshuva. Really? Uh, when I went to, after the army, I went to Miami and I was in a, I got into business and then I had to like figure out how to make business. I said, okay, well, I know the only people I can make business with are people that I know. And everyone I know is from my past life when I was religious. Mm. So I had to go back to shul in order to get them. So a complete gosh mute, I started to go back to shul. And then uh, they said, listen, there's a new Breslov, uh, there's a new Breslov center in Miami. You should go check it out. I went in and I saw Gedalia with all his, you know, metrosexualness. Yeah, his swag. Gedalia's swag is it's the best. Really insane. Exactly. And then, like, I judged him. I was like, wow, the Jews of Aventura have gotten so strong in the past five years that I haven't been here. Mm. And then I finished wrapping up my tefillin, and uh, one of the chassidim there in Breast of Center said, hey, come to the shiur, get a bagel and come to the shiur. Mm. And I came to the shiur, and uh, it was Gedalia giving the shiur. So I came up to him after, I was like, I judged you, and I judged you based on how you look, and the Maserati outside, but what is your secret? He's like, I'm a chassi of Rav Arush for 15 years. <laughs> wow. So, so uh, over the next, like, few months, he kind of pushed me to go back there to Eretz soil and uh, to start keeping me spot more and more, and when, as soon as I got there to Eretz I was in, uh, I was in Midrash Sfaradi in the old city for a little bit, then I went to Machon Meir, and every Wednesday I would go to the shiur of the Rav, wow. Rav Brody and Rav Arush, wow. and uh, I heard insane Nisim and Niflaud of people that, like, lost millions of dollars and they were in the crowd and Rav Arush is like stand up tell the story wow. said, yeah Rav Arush told me to say thank you for six hours a day and I made 12 million dollars in two months wow. like crazy crazy thing so like I, I think I might have seen you there maybe and, and those Wednesday I used to come Very once possible. in a while wow so, so Gedalia like he, yeah, he so. the amazing thing with Gedalia is just before we get big going is just I'm listening to him on a daily level for a few years now and I always tell him, I said, like, I'm around such holy, holy people in Yushalayim and Sadiqim and Kadoshim, and I'm listening to you every day, Gedali, and you're in Miami, and, the, you know, the swag he has and everything going on there. I've had the pleasure to be by his home a few times, and, you know, we've been together in Yushalayim and Uman, and uh, it's amazing. Someone who's so out in the world is able to bring such a message that someone in Yushalayim who's surrounded by all the Siddiquim would still listen to him over the Siddiquim. So it's, it's, it That's shows you. It's Dafka, it's Dafka because of how he looks. No, I mean, I, it's a panemius thing. It's an inner thing. Like he, he's on the, he's on the mark. He's, he's bringing it down in a practical way that's needed for our generation. That it's, it's yeah. like a lifesaver. Specifically because he, like you said, like he dresses that way, that you realize, like you said, it is about inside and not about the outside. It is a premium thing. Yeah. It's but a you realize thing, that, like, wow. Exactly. It doesn't matter he, how you he get looks dressed. that way, it, it, it throws you off, and then you realize, wait, he looks like that, but he's really a tzaddik. So, like, what is looks? I mean, what is the importance of money? What is the importance of a Maserati? Yeah. All of that stuff is just because he happens to live in Miami and he can afford to, to pay for a car that's nice. So why not pay for a car that's nice? You know, but, but he's such a tzaddik, like his days, 
Insane, his schedule, his daily schedule is completely yeah. I mean, we, we went to his rehab and uh, his detox center when it was pretty new and he had a lot of clients already and it was amazing to go there with Rav Oresh and to tour and see Rav Oresh. I had I went there twice, I think, and the first time was um, was a more like a general just, you know, tour. But the second time we actually sat with the clients and Rav Oresh gave over <laughs> the most awesome recovery class I've ever heard. Like I, I'm, I worked for Retorno at one point, so I had a connection to the recovery world. And the way Rav Oresh handled the session was out this world. I had the merit to translate it into English. And it was just awesome. It was like meditative. It took everyone into a different space. And by the end, everybody was just open and wanting to connect. It was such an amazing session. And Gadali himself was just enjoying every minute of it having my voice give over a session in his, his detox. And we, I think I even had the audio, but um, I couldn't do any video or visual because, you know, of privacy and things like that. But it was just an amazing session. And, you know, it just shows you that when you bring a sadik into such a space, he's not qualified officially, but he's able to reach to the soul, uh, the soul level. And that, that is something which I've been very inspired by myself. And um, one of the focuses I'm busy with right now is United Souls, is inspiring souls. That's, that's bringing unity into the world and through the soul level. So um, Rav Oresh definitely was one of the key um, teachers for me in that, in that way. People talk about Amuna, Amuna. For me, it was, it was about Nishamas, you know, souls. And uh, everyone has their different Nakuda that they really get inspired by. So with Gedalia, he was a special Nishama and he saw in me a special Nishama as well. Um, you know, that's what he saw, you know, I hope I am, but he saw that and he gave a lot of encouragement to me from the minute I met him that I can bring a certain new energy to 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 Chut Chesed in Brez of Israel. And he very much was the push for me to, to return there when I left for, a, for about six months in the middle of being there. And uh, in that meanwhile, you know, there was a lot of changes went on and it was it was it was all about the neshama, the soul, and that that's what I feel with Gedalia, that the way they look and stuff like that doesn't really make a difference, you know. It's the soul, and then yeah, then I get inspired because he's able to reach people that I maybe or a more holy looking person would not be able to reach. Um, but the the inner point is that when you get together with all these beautiful souls, you see that's what that's what's uniting us that that connection and. And, uh, you know, I'm happy to be here with you two special souls, you know, thank you for making time tonight. And, uh, you know, we're in the Holy Land, it's Arab Pesach, it's a busy time. Uh, and, um, you know, thank God, you know, like, uh, you guys made it happen. And please God, one day soon, we'll have Nissan Black come as well. We mentioned that. And, uh, you know, this is your show. So take it away. You know? Quite a bit of talk before, but we're really, really excited to introduce. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna go with your full name because Rav Arush also says the importance of names sometimes. Uh, Eliezer Goldsmith. Um, it's actually Elio Eliezer after Rav Desler. Eliao Eliezer. Yeah. Wow, Eliao Eliezer. That's from Rav Desler, no? Yeah, it's Gematria Shinayan, Nehirin Shinayan. So the deep, deep things going on over there with my name. Yeah. So we have with us Eliao Eliezer Goldsmith. Yeah. who uh, is the online figure pushing the rest of Israel and the uh, rest of the English um, and uh, and Muna classes with Rabbi Arush, with different guests, a few different podcasts, and a bunch of social media accounts from LinkedIn to Facebook to Instagram, Twitter, everything out there um, in order to inspire and to unify souls. I think that's the main uh, name of your of your entity is, is Unity and Unified Souls. United really, Souls, really yeah. happy to have you on. Yeah, thank you. And also a manager, right? Yes, yeah, so I, I was managing this in black in, uh, for about a year and a half, but the, thank God we have a very good manager now who, who takes that responsibility on. I have the merit to do booking, Unity bookings for this in black and a long list of artists and speakers, um, including people like Monica Ben Avram and Rav Oresh and, and then many well-known musicians. Yeah, and we would like to be doing events but this Corona thing sort of got in the way. We were planning a lot for this summer that, that was. Um, right now, I, it caused me to change my focus to more online 
and less, you know, in-person events. And that focus change has actually been quite rewarding. So we can talk about that, you know. Yeah, what does the future look like for the events? Like, since you're talking about the COVID... And okay, the so... Changes, actually. So the blessing was that we were already building a studio in Shifta Yisrael in, uh, by Brez of Israel with Rav Arish. We were building one and it literally got finished. And we're talking about months and months of building and I would go up on the roof and have like uh, Zoom chats with different people around the world and or, or conversations to get out of the office and just be on this beautiful roof in Yushalayim. And they were building this studio on this roof and it got completed last year um, just before Pesach, just after Purim. So we had the opportunity to really connect and it was amazing like to be able to begin my personal classes in the studio as the Corona challenge kicked off as tragic as it's been, but at the, the positive side was we had the refuah, we had the key for our program that we could start putting out good content from our studio in Jerusalem with the green screens and all the professional equipment and it's been amazing and this summer was when we started the classes with Rav Shalom Arush, he asked, he specifically requested that he's ready now to come in the studio, everything was starting to work and we've had 31 classes already on a weekly level starting on Tuesday. Now it's on Sunday at 8.30 p.m. and 1.30 New York time. And, you know, it's been a global uh, class and thank God the, the guests who've come um, have been very, you know, large selection. A lot of them are a collection of people that I've been working with over the years personally. So it was already just like a natural flow to come bring them into the studio. Um, and it's also created new relationships, like um, like I said, with Eight and Cats coming this Sunday will be our 30 second class. That will be my opportunity to really host him on a music level. I've met him in shul and, you know, I've seen him and, you know, do beautiful music projects, but I never actually did any any uh, music or, or online work with him. So the way I would explain how we've shifted is bringing the music world online more, like into the streaming space. I put out two uh, United Soul collaboration albums and also put out an EP for ladies, for, for Colisha, it's United Soul's key. Um, I haven't made such a public noise about that one yet because of, you know, I'm, I like to stay away from controversy. It's all about unity. Um, but thank God we have that and it's available on, on Spotify and all the uh, audio platforms. And so that was a big change. Instead of doing a large unity event of all these list of artists, so my father, who's been in the music business since the 60s, said, why don't you make a, a collaboration album with all these artists since they can't tour? They're more available anyway. And that's what we did. And so with the Studio Weekly and with the online um, streaming album and albums, and also uh, personally, I've really been working hard on my podcasts and Thank God I've seen some, you know, fruits come out from that. Some other people were inspired in the Jewish world to begin their own podcast after listening to mine and using the Anchor app, which has been amazing. I wonder. Yeah. Who are you talking about? No, I don't know if you guys. I'm, I, I didn't. Yeah, I, I, I definitely was. I'm yeah. very inspired by everything you're doing online. Uh, Thank especially, you. Especially, specifically what you're doing with Rav Because if a tzaddik can take time out of his week, every day to sit down and to uh, get online and get in front of a camera and to speak, then Kado Homer, someone who's already on social media um, and already on these platforms, yeah. then we should also be, you know, like if you have a voice, you got to put it out there a bit. Yeah, all the more so, exactly. So to say Rav Oresh, for example, um, you know, having the merit to work with him since 2018, um, honestly, like, I can't, it's sort of beyond words, but at the same time, it was a progression because I was working with Nissan Black, which was a progression from previous projects, but being a, a manager of Nissan and the Breslov of Olam noticed me, you know, like who's this guy running Nissan Black's online presence and shows, and it was a very successful time period then. We did a lot of big, big performances and traveled a lot, um, but I was finding it a little bit too much for my Shalom Bayat you know, being out of the country like almost the whole month and um, running, you know, everything, literally, like social media, what would go on Instagram to, all the way to 
in, to the bookings, to the accountant, to everything. It was like, uh, it, it was too much for one person. So I had a conversation with Nisim. In the meanwhile, Brothers of Israel reached out to me and said, you know, we'd, we'd love, you know, to see if you'd be the new English director. And I had a meeting with them and they, they said, yeah, you, you're the man. And, and then it was a while of negotiation. You know how it goes with these things. You don't just say yes straight away. And my rabbis, who I speak to, the Tolna Rebbe, um, once I got the bracha from him, the blessing from him, that, you know, I could go and work with Breslov. You know, he's Chernobyl, Breslov, you know, like, I just want to double check. So, and he basically said, for sure, you, you know, it's a, it's a big honor. And, you know, all the technical stuff we worked out. And I came on tour with Rav Oresh. I organized the three-week tour. And that was amazing, like spending three weeks non-stop with Rav Shalom Arush. And at that time, it was Rav Leza Brody as well. And also the rest of the staff there were, and all the friends of Brez of Israel. So then someone like Gedalia, who had already had connection with through online, suddenly I was able to stay in his house and really start to connect with him, you know, in person. And, you know, I'd already met the, the Lighthouse Project, Michael Ben Melech. It's another special light. And... Yeah, I met him. So the truth was, I think what really laid the foundation was Nissen Black managed to do the impossible, which many other Breslovers had failed. Um, and I'm talking about big Breslovers in, in Mesharim and other very well-known special Breslovers. They, you know, we're talking, Sadiqim, people that you've mentioned on your podcast, were trying to get me to go to Uman for like, say, around 15 years or so. And I'm not going to go into all the specifics why I hadn't been, hadn't made the trip but it just uh it needed someone like Nissen Black to make it happen and in Elo there's a picture of us holding the two the tickets and that was it and then my first trip there was really where I met everybody and that really opened up the doors to Breslov for me I mean I always had a connection to Rabbi Nachman but to meet all the personalities and the intensity of Uman you know what goes on there and see that and at that time I was managing Nissen so you know, to bring him on stage and the massive events that go on. I don't know if you've been there, if you know what it's like, but... If... I haven't yet. I really, I like, I also personally, I was, uh... You haven't been to Uman? I haven't been to Uman. What? Well, I, well, was very... I cannot say much. I was in 770. I, I well, was 770. Like, uh, not, not about it. And, um, and lately, the more aggressive I've been learning, the more I've opened up to it. And then this year, it would have been the, probably the first year that I would have gone. Not for Rosh Hashanah. I'm still not there yet. Yeah. Chagim, I want to be in Eretz Israel, yeah. but I would still want to go to the Tzion, and then all of this uh, lockdown stuff happened, so I haven't been able to go, yeah. but um, I, I, I see what goes on there, I'm connected to all the people that go there, I have the yeah. crazy stories that come back, you just added another one that technically, according to what you just said, once you went to the Tzadik, everything opened up for you. Well, so, in terms of like my connection uh, to to more Siddiquim and special people, and it was an amazing network, I mean, it's like everybody... You know, I, was, I got close with Shiner's people, and then there's there's just so many amazing people there that I got to speak to and connect with, and I'm still friends with till this day, and it's, you know, still the momentum. Some of my best friends have been going for years, my, my best, best friends from coming since I came to Israel. But you have to give, I have to give context, because I grew up in, you know, secular North London, and I was involved with the biggest events on earth. Like, I grew up as a young boy at Live Aid in the Royal Box and seeing thousands and thousands of people in events was very normal for my like yearly calendar. Like I'd for sure be at a Wembley Stadium event at least a few times a year at Wembley Arena and see these humongous events. And, you know, my family were involved with music, were involved in entertainment. So the wrestling industry, WWF or E, as they call it now, was also a big part of my upbringing. Exactly. And, yeah, just, you know, I grew up like meeting, you know, all the greats in the music business and the wrestling world. And, you know, Macho Man Savage was a good friend of my dad. And, you know, like and my dad discovered his Judaism for him. You know, it's like crazy stories I have. I could go on forever, but we're not going to go into all that now. But just having that whole upbringing and then coming to Israel. You weren't a wrestler. I wasn't a wrestler, but I was called the Xbox Rebbe by a yeshiva called Netzach, which I live right next to right now. <laughs> And the reason was because I used to play the Xbox, but some people thought it was because I was an Xboxer, yeah? <laughs> but it wasn't, it was because of the Xbox. Um, but anyway, so, yeah. 
we used to, it was a good way of keeping the guys off the streets and when i i went from the xbox rab, rabbi to the midnight rabbi that was the other yeshiva neyakov which i was also working at i'd go after netzach after being there from like 10 till 1 in the morning i go to near jake till like 4 in the morning and the boys there called me the midnight rabbi and that name stuck online as well and uh yeah, yeah. I, I, I keep it because it just, it, for me, it demonstrates the years of where I was truly devoted to the at uh, you know, teenage at risk world. I was there on the streets with them and I made events for them and I was totally dedicated. And it inspires me, honestly, that my wife was able to put up with it in those formative years of, you know, we had lots of babies in the house and I wasn't around. I was like literally up all night. And the rest of the day, I was by RFC Mai Zilberberg in his kollel and davening with him for hours and by the kollel of and uh, I literally wasn't at home other than to nap for a little bit and when I brought all the bochum around for like big shabbases and you know it was a crazy few years and you know right now I'm paying back my wife by dedicating much more time to her and thank God to the corona challenge that I can be at home more you know I haven't traveled since um, before Purim and last year and it's amazing that I just thank God, like Hashem's really given me the opportunity. Like Shalasudas for me, I had to be by a Sadiq. There was no choice. But this whole year I've pretty much been at home and focused on my wife and, and children and and hopefully that's been good for them. <laughs> you know, at one point it was like better he's out of the house. Like go go to the river. Go. You'll become a better person. <laughs> but now it's like, you know now now I'm appreciated a little bit at home. So it's a good it's a good switcheroo. But you know, I've, I've gone through a lot in the in the Bout Shuba world. I've worked for Derech Hamelach, and I don't know if you remember that place, and you know, and uh, I was I worked for many yeshivas, and thank God, um, Neve Sion was one of the craziest because I'd go there all night because I'd get the last How bus. Was that transition, huh? <laughs> you because you were doing all these things right before, like the managing and like. All oh, the so this was all no the managing the musician stuff was came more afterwards like when i was working in a bay i got like the secular yeah so when you were secular oh secular so when i was secular i was running nightclubs and i was had my crew of musicians and friends and poets and it was really cool we were very expressive and how did i you know wake up my question was why am i jewish that was the constant question of my mind because i went to school a public school with all kinds of souls not not all kinds of humans not just jews everyone was there and that kind of openness, that experience that I had growing up with every kind of person that exists, you know, the refugees in this school, and it was a very public, you know, open school and quite rough as well. And it gave me the ability to see all kinds of people. So when I started slowly getting connected to Jews, my question was, why am I being drawn to Jews when majority of the people I grew up with were not Jewish? Why did I keep finding myself dating Jewish girls or you know, when I came to Israel, what does it mean to be Jewish? You know, that like the birthright kind of concept. You know, I, I came myself. I, I was awakened. My soul was awakening. And uh, through music and through expression and connecting with souls, I was already waking up at the age of 17, 18. And by the time of university, I was, I was still in, I was in the university, but I was really still back here in Israel because I'd already been there before. And I never really settled into university. I was, I was just a matter of time till I came back to Yeshiva and uh, had that experience, thank God, of being in Yeshiva and thank God by 21, marrying my soulmate. And it was just very big divine providence constantly revealing itself. Like my first date was my wife. A lot of people go through a lot of struggle in that area, you know. Um, Hashem was very kind to me. I had... My wife, I was living in Yushalayim. I'm living again in Yushalayim, right next to where I started, which was in Osamech. Um, I'm five minutes from there, and five minutes from Rav Orish, and five minutes from, you know, Meir Shorim, and five minutes from the Tolna Rebbe. You know, it's, I don't, during this whole year, I, I'm surrounded by everything I need, you know. And uh, I don't really have to, even when there was a limitation on going further than a thousand meters or whatever it was, everything was less so i was i was sorted i didn't have to break any rules and i was able to you know run the studio and thank god we ha i was in my office the whole this whole year 
And you just you see how Hashem does this kindness all the time, this divine Shefa that comes into your life, you know, to be able to uh, to be able to live in Yushalayim and to in the holiest city and be connected. So when I connect to Rav Oresh, to get back to that story, um, and I was on those three weeks with him, and again another year, and all the info, you know, there's a lot of logistics that go into organizing tours. You know, thank God being with Nissan before, um, and still with Nissan, you know, we're, we're always looking for new bookings for Nissan Black and all the artists. Um, the logistics, you start to get, you know, with contracts and this and that. So you don't have to use contracts with Avorish. It's more like, a, you know, it's more of a connection than a contract. But um, it's just amazing having the opportunity to meet all these key people in different communities and they want to host Avorish. So now this whole year, like, I, we're, we're connecting to them through Zoom. Like, we had a Toronto Zoom um, experience on, through the live feed, through YouTube, through Instagram through Facebook and, you know, they were on Zoom. We had some people on Zoom as well. Um, we use more Zoom as more just the, you know, way of actually connecting to the person that we wanted to speak to rather than making it interactive so much because the live feed gives an opportunity for people to to talk, you know, to message us, to DM and and to leave their connection. And the whole thing of having meetings with the Rav, you know, I was blessed to be in many, many meetings on these tours with Rav Varish. And to see the way he inspires these souls. You know, we're talking about like when we're in Houston, majority of people that came to the meetings and they had to pay to have these meetings. It's, it costs money, but that's, you know, it's a pigeon nefesh. It goes to Zadaka. And I was responsible for all this stuff going on. And I was looking at these people in this meeting. They were like, you know, real, like not Jewish people. Like, very, I don't want to say like the terminology. So, you know, you have to be careful how you speak online. But they were very far away from from the normal crowds that we usually get, like in New York or Miami. It was people who had literally driven ten hours to come meet with the Rav and pay for it. And what was their burning question? Their burning question was, "How do I connect to God more? How do I do this holy thing you talk about, Rav Oresh, called Espodidus? I'm trying it. I'm reading all your books. I'm, you know, I'm not Jewish, but I want to connect to God like the way you're teaching." And that was, that's the point. So when you're with Rav Oresh and you see how he's able, and this has always been his way from what I've heard and seen. He's always been into Simcha and smiling, his whole essence. We've got a beautiful picture of him when he was, you know, just, just uh, out of the army and he was smiling, you know. So he, he was always into picking up people, but this Ritzonus to bring this will, to bring a Muna global, this is something which he... If he is most nefesh with his whole being for, and even before the Corona thing, he was always traveling around the country and was always traveling around the world. To you know, there's there's videos of him with thousands and thousands of of South African you know uh, colored people, thousands, and they want him to come. They were trying to reach out to me before this whole thing happened, and we were meant to go on a trip to South Africa, not just for the Jewish community, but for them. They want a host or Colum Colombia. There's a whole non-Jewish community and Texas, whole non-Jewish community. The world wanted to connect to this light of Amun and still does. And it's a growing phenomenon. Um, obviously, so Rav, has yeah. Rav ever talked to you? And has Rav ever like, explained to you outright um, what his Ashkafa is when it comes to, I know he has universal Ghana and Muna, like yeah. universal for like B'nai Noach, or for everyone in the world can read the Garden of Emuna. Um, but has he ever like expressed to you outright what his culture is to this whole idea of reaching out not only to Jews, religious and non-religious Jews, but to Africans, to South Americans, to people all over the world that are not at all Jewish, not at all yeah. connected to Torah Mitzvah. Yeah. I mean, I've had the pleasure to see the, the constant influx of non-Jewish people to our channels and had many discussions with them and, you know, and the B'nai Noach world and it, it's an amazing phenomenon. And what I would say from Rav Oresh himself is that Amuna, as you said, is universal. It's something which he said to us, it's a universal thing. It's a universal truth that's relevant for everybody, not just Jewish people. It's totally uh, for humanity. Everyone needs a Muna. He said it many, many times. And he proved it, for example, in the recovery center, because not everyone there was Jewish. Um, 
I think majority were because it worked out that's the ones who who worked out to be there. But the ability to give over that universal message of for the recovery world, it needs that belief in absolute power. That's the foundation. So Rav Oresh was able to, in many scenarios, able to talk to people's soul. That was the point that he's he's giving them tools that they can have more connection with their godly soul in a in a real practical way. And that's what he often would say that you have all my books, learn my books and apply them and you have the guide you need. I mean, it's not normal the amount of books we sold on these trips. We're talking about each person would walk in, would walk out with 10 books minimum. It was like thousands of books that I've never seen. Like, I, I've seen it myself. Yeah, and, and I wasn't like... So when you read his books, like yeah. talks to you. Yeah. You know, I'm, I, I, I personally found the books, like when I was on my journey, like I started off in Osamer, I was already reading the Garden of Amuna then over 20 years ago. And I was, you know, rocking out to Yosef Kaduna, who at that time was one of the only few Jewish musicians I could relate to coming from, you know, the greatest of the greats, you know, growing up with Queen and, you know, you know, the biggest bands in the history, Rolling Stones and everyone you can imagine, you know, like I've got stories how we got music equipment donated to Yeshiva because of my family's connection to Led Zeppelin when they made the reunion concert. Like, so to try bring... Yeah, really yeah, I mean, to try bring like Jewish, you know, music to someone who's so ch attuned to such quality music and the level at that time, you know, it wasn't where it's at now, thank God. And that was for me a very big drive. How can we get music to a new level? And thank God, Rav Orish, thank God again, I'm working with him now. And after all these years of trying to push music in the Jewish world, to get to a high level and work with high level musicians and promote them and push them and encourage them. Rav Oresh has now said to us, I want you guys to come to my studio and I want, he gets so happy. He says it's such a surprise every time you guys come to my studio and he gets, Ellie, you brought me another surprise. He said it this week. He gets so happy because he says himself that the power of music to, to help people do tshuva, to help people connect to a munna, is huge. I call it Amuna music now, thanks to him, or Unity music. This concept of bringing music to a new level, like we see the effect of what's going on in the world out there in the negative, you know, with like, you know, I don't want to say too many of these names, but just someone ending with B, yeah, for example, yeah, I don't know if you know, but yeah. so low, it's so bad, yeah, it's so Hashem Shemreinu, it's such a uh, opposite of what, you know, we're trying to do, and we have the opportunity to, through music, to go the other way and lift everything up, to lift people up to new connections to that they didn't even know about. And music has a unifying power. Like I said, I saw at Live Aid this unifying experience of souls. And I was like, we got to do that in the Jewish world. We got to do that in the global world. We got to figure out how to, as the Jewish people, to do some good PR for a change, you know, instead of what's been going on, you know, like. We've got to get the message that everyone can relate to and, and anyone who disagrees with our message of Amuna and unity and, and, and positive living and elevated living and happy living and happy lives, anyone who disagrees with that, it's because there's something, it's not, it's not because of us, it's because there's something off, you know, it's, and for example, say we made a unity event, that was one of my dreams, and BDS came out against it, yeah? Not BSD, not Basata Dishmaya, BDS, the opposite, yeah? And I'd say, look, you're welcome to join this Unity event. Yes. And they say, no, 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 we're not interested because you are you live in Jerusalem and you're Jewish or something. So I said, I don't know, did you hear what he just said? I mean, what or this person said? It sounds like they've got a, race, a racial issue. They have, they will expose their lack of unity by not wanting to join what we're trying to do. That's the kind of message that I want to bring. And thank God, working where I've Orish, it hasn't had any uh, conflict of interest. Like I'm very loyal when I work with people, I want to work with them on a real transparent way. Like I don't want to, like, you know, on the side, I'm doing the unity projects and it doesn't fit with Rav Orish, but you know, I've got my agenda, God forbid. No, my unity projects is together with everything that Rav Orish, there's no contradiction because for example, one of his main students is, is Nissan Black, and that's who I've worked with for years. It's, it's the whole message, the whole energy is, is thank God, is 
combining. And every time I go to the Tal Rebbe and ask him, can I go to Uman? Or, he's like, you know, if your wife lets, you know, go. Yeah. Like, you know, it, it doesn't contradict Let's even... Tell us a little bit more about your wife. Let's... Tal Nerebbe? Which, oh, the Rebbe Arush. No, no, not Rebbe Arush. A little bit more about the Tal Nerebbe. It's, it's Rabbi Yitzhak Menachem, right? Rebbe, yeah, Rabbi, 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 Rabbi Yitzhak Menachem Weinberg, Schlitter. He is my official, you know, Rebbe um, that I go to from, you know, my larger life decisions. And he has taken a, a, a lot of his time and he's given us a lot of support and love. And I pray there as well on the main times, uh, you know, the Yom Tov and Shabbos. And thank God, you know, he's, he's very caring towards our family and a very special person. He, interestingly, I have this, the merit to be connected to the, the CEO of Ami magazine. I've had Nissan Black in the magazine and Rav Oresh and, you know, I helped with a few other projects. But uh, when he asked me for the Tolna Rebbe, the Tolna Rebbe wasn't, interested in being in the Ami magazine. So for me, it's like being around Rav Oresh, he wants to get his message out there, yeah? So I'm like, you know, Tom the Rebbe, let's get your message out there. And, that, he's, and he speaks English as well, and he's a genius. He's, he's not interested, he said, I'm very happy. And he once came to me Shabbos morning. He said, look at this beautiful shul, and there's, there's, you know, we're all sitting and learning together, about to go pray. I don't need anything else, you know? I, I'm not trying to like, so that you see there's different kinds of neshamas. Rav Oresh, is cocking. He wants to go and he, he, he would not sleep on these tours. He literally would be up all night after we'd been till two, three in the morning with everybody, like giving them chizak after the class. It wasn't, it's not just all the preparations, the whole day doing meetings. And then finally we get that little hour before to eat a little bit and daven and then go to the next class and this big class. And then there's all the Kabbalah's ponim, seeing everyone for another few hours. And then finally, we're back at the home, you know, that we're staying at, the, the kind guests, and it's an opportunity to rest a few hours before we need to go to our next place or the next meetings or Dove and Nate's, who is Dove and Nate's. He, I would, if I couldn't sleep, because not because I'm a sadic, because I had, you know, uh, what's it called, jet lag, I would stay up and like talk to my wife. At one time, I had to take Sarah some deals in Israel that was like, we were in Toronto, so it was already morning there. And I, I was like, Amazed, I was seeing my voice walking around and he was praying. He was davening for all the people that we were with in the day. He was doing a spot. It, it didn't stop. And same with on the planes and the same on the buses. And, you know, that's his, his light is to get the shamans, to pick up the shamans. And all day he loves seeing people. Every class we now have meetings afterwards. And he's excited to see those people that love him. And he, he can see the connection he has with them, the love and the, the warmth and, you know, it's, it's, it's unbelievable, and uh, so, but the Tolna Rebbe, he has his, a different focus, it's the Kehillah around him, and then the Shamas around him, and it's a different focus, and they're both great in different ways, you know, and... And it reminds me of the comparison between Avraham, Avinu, and Yitzhak. Yeah. Like Avraham is all about Chesed, and, yeah. you know, going out of the world, Yitzhak just stayed, and it was totally different... Uh, Energy is more chesed versus 100%. I mean, our tours were always around the Parshas of Rabbi Mavinu, our three-week tours. And I always liked that. I was excited. I, the, to, the, the Torah, the Kriya, the Parsha is Ma'ur and Isman. So every year we'd come to Lech Lecha and that's when we went. We went on Noach, Lech Lecha, the Yaira, and, you know, and going ahead, you know, Chai Sara. And we'd return back for Chai Sara and that's already Yitzhak, like you said. Then I'd be back by Tolna again. So it was always like, I felt like I was with Avram and Sar, you know, um, Rav Oresh and his rabbini. And then I was back with Tom the Rebbe, my, my Rebbe, you know. And that was the, the beautiful thing, you know. I, I want to say something to you guys, like just a little bit of chizuk, that you, you should understand that Rav Oresh wants people out there. And I know myself, like, on a hidden level, there's a lot of Talmudim who've come there who are no longer there, yeah. Like, I don't know if you remember, we'll say some names, you know, it's only to Ellis, nothing, God forbid, no negative speeches. People like uh, draw Moshe Kasuto and, uh, you know, Laser Brody, obviously. And there's a long list of Hoshiba people that, if you go onto the brezdov.co.il and look on the VOD website, all the amount of people there have given video share in there over the years in English, you'll see there's a Hoshiba list. And that's only English, there's all the other languages as well. And a lot of people have come through there as you yourself did back in the day as well. Um, and what's beautiful about it is that Rav Oresh is very happy. I mean, I heard this from people 
and it was like a, more of a private chat. But I think there's something which, you know, you guys can get some encouragement from that the real key is with a Sadik, and this is the same by Sri Maya Zilberberg, who I was by many, many years, and he's a huge Sadik. And it's like being with a Bidichava, maybe it's a Bidichava. I literally was like in another, another world, you know, Simaya Shlita should be Gazun, and we, this kind of energy of like Lishma, where they didn't care about their own most of themselves as much as the message, the, the, the Avoda. So by Simaya, the Avoda is the most important thing, the holy worship. By Rav Oresh, getting out the, the message of Muna. So if his student's no longer there, it doesn't matter, because it's not about the student, it's not about him, it's about a Muna going global. So now Kasuto can bring a Muna to wherever he is in Orlando and uh, Laser Brody's in Ashdod and he's got his shirim and it doesn't make a difference. Even though on a nefish level, like, well, you know, I'm not getting paid by them anymore. So, you know, blah, blah, blah. All that stuff, you know, the Gashmir's the, the bonus. But on the spiritual level, on the soul level, it's, be, it's, it's a mission that's beyond the institutes and beyond the pay grade and beyond the rabbi, beyond everything. It's a... It's a mission to get us ready for Mashiach, like our friend who just who obviously has to go somewhere. Like with Chabad, I went to 770 a few times with Nisim, and one of my favorite places to visit now in America is, is the Rebbe's Keva, yeah? The Babcha Rebbe's Keva, the oil. The oil for me is one of them, I was just mentioning it, uh, your, your Heilige Chesidus, that the oil, you know, for me is one of the most uplifting places I've ever been to in my life, other than maybe the Koso and you know, but being by Sadiqim here in Israel, or Sfat, when I come to Sfat, I get very inspired. And I, I miss being in Sfat, I haven't been there for a while now. Um, but the the uh, the oil is just beautiful. I mean, that's one of the first places I'm going to go back to when I go to America, Blinada, if I need to go, I'm going to go to the oil because it's such an amazing place. And 770 as well was very inspiring, you know, seeing the effect they had. We were there for a CT in Shabbos, and I had the pleasure to spend time with Rab. Oh, in Times Square. Yeah, yeah. So I was the manager then and I was the DJ and I got to hang out with Reb Shai's Taub the whole Shabbos. I was amazing talking to him. I've always been a big fan of him and Yway Jacobson, you know, like I went on tour around Ukraine with Yway Jacobson and just having the, the ability to spend time with these kind of people, you know, official Shechta, I'm very inspired by him and I have a lot of people that are influencing me and that and nowadays, honestly, a lot of non-Jewish podcasts are influencing me. Like I, I love listening to these long form podcasts from people like Joe Rogan, you know, obviously you have to, yeah. you know, filter out some of the noise of the, you know, the rudeness and stuff, but the, the concepts and the, the conversation and Ben Shapiro, you know, it's, you know, he's Jewish, but it's, it's still in about non-Jewish, you know, general politics and other things, or, you know, not so that much that I'm interested in the politics. I'm interested in the, in the, uh, the process of conversation and presenting and the facts and, not not the emotional side of it, right? Even though the emotional side is important to me. What's going on in the world? Yeah, and just understanding, getting clarity of, you know, what the struggles are nowadays, and then, and also with Tim Ferriss and Lewis Howes, and I was a big fan back in the day of Tony Robbins, but not as much these days, or Oprah, not as much these days. You know, there's a new generation of people that I'm tuning into, and you know, and I feel there's such potential with that. I mean, even like where I come from in England, there's a few podcasts I'm listening to from like the more like. You know, I grew up like more Cockney, you know, like with the Cockney crowd and more like, you know, the black culture in London. And I, that was my. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that so I, I get his it from to me also. Yeah. Like the fact that you come from such a place and you said you were promoting clubs. Yeah. Like nightclubs, right? Yeah. You mean, and now you're literally promoting Zadikim. <laughs> like Rav Arush. Yeah. Tour, so Rav Arush were talking about you, Jacobson missing black. Yeah. I don't usually say this publicly, but if, if you wanted a good title, I haven't done it yet, but you could like have from Pimps and Whores, which is the name of my nightclub, to, you know, Amuna Tour Global, you know, this is one of the first times I'm saying this on the way, Jewish is, thing. <laughs> I, I'm someone that would take a risk on that because I know the effect yeah. that it could have. Yeah, but that was, that was, I mean, that, that night, my wife was there, my, you know, wife's twin brother, like, like we... That was a monumental night when I had that big success at Pimps and Whores, you know, like in, in London in a, in a mafia not, mafioso nightclub. That was awesome, you know, like for that world. And a lot of the... Prof like that world prepared you for doing what you're doing? Yeah, definitely. Like that's the whole idea about Tshuva, that that's something which 
took me a long time, a process. I, I would divide up my life into 10 years, like generation, like first 10 years, you know, being a little kid, experiencing, you know, London, then the second 10 years, becoming a teenager and finding myself, finding my soulmate, finding my purpose, finding Judaism, finding spirituality. And then the next 10 years, I was sitting literally like in Yeshiva Shalmaila, like I was by Rav Simaya, by Siddiquim, Kadoshim, Porish from the Gashmir. So I was completely in another world. For 10 years, I wasn't online. I, only at the end of those, that, that, you know, 20 to 30, you know, age group, that 20 year age group of being married and bringing down the Shamas and being around Siddiquim. Only then, that next, this last 10 years, was I back in the world again. And that was the whole key now. How do I bridge everything I was before the first 20 years during those 10 years of very high avoda? Even though I was working with Bokhrim then, but I was still very high, like I wasn't online. They put me online as a midnight rabbi. And then this last 10 years of, you know, just building like, you know, so much work experience. I worked for corporate America, I worked for rehab. I did so many different projects. I saw what it's like in the, you know, economy and, and how it works in Israel. And I worked for a, a famous Israeli charity called the Jaffa Institute who have you know, places all around Israel for four years. And while I was there, I worked for Ashrenu, an American program, and put on shows. Nissan Black's first show was in that program in Israel and uh, for him. And, you know, I was already, I was hanging out with a guy called Shine. And there were so many interesting souls that came into my Dalai Lama's, you know, like Why Love and so many interesting people. And, you know, Baruch Hashem, you know, I had, at the same time, I was very close to the holy, holy people. And it was an interesting bridge. But now I feel like this next 10 years, being now I'm 41 now, and with the coronavirus kicking it off and Purim year, because I'm Purim year, though, as you can see in my cup, it says Purim. I don't know if it comes up, but it's a Purim cup, yeah? yeah. So the Purim cup and Purim year, I was born in Purim. So for me, it's a monumental time that suddenly Corona came in. And now this next 10 years, I think for me, it's about bridging everything. Now, bringing united souls, bringing unity, globalizing this message, bringing musicians global, bringing the Siddiquim, the light of Siddiquim global, everything should go, you know, huge. And you guys are part of that process. You know, we're sitting together doing this podcast. Right now, we're like hitting small numbers, yeah? I mean, our Amuna class gets 30,000 minimum viewers, yeah? So it's not that small. But it's it's still in the growth process, you know. It's I don't think it's where it's sh where it should remain. I you have to always push and try and grow and hustle and you know you never know like in, with an Rabbi honesty. Me this. Yeah. Rabbi Arush taught me. He said that when you're like when you pray, right? Don't just say Hashem give me a wife. Give me a wife like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. Mamash, be very clear with Hashem what you want, right? And why? Because it's Hashem. So whatever you want, He can give it to you. So don't don't just say the simple "I need a wife." No, ask Mamash everything that you need for. So Bezat Hashem, you're the one that's with Him all day long. You gotta do that. I mean, we have to ask. We have to really ask, and we have to push. I mean, one of the things that you have to do it with balance, and you have to go with process. You know, that's where all these other podcasts come into play, where you have to have a healthy lifestyle and take make sure the family are first and. You know, there's steps, like you see behind me, it's steps, like you can't just, you can't just uh, jump up. I did that by Rasimaya. Rasimaya used to talk about Rav Sodak Cohen and how there's nothing that can stop your will, the will of, per of a person and the power of Tefili can dumb for everything, with Ruchnius for sure. You know, this is the kind of energy I got from Rasimaya. But the, the reality is you have to now bring it into your kalim, into your vessels, into your reality. And it's very important to bring it into your everyday life and, t and be patient with the process. And that's, that's the key, that balance, where you have a tremendous rots and a will, but you're also very down to earth and practical. And often if you're blessed with a good soulmate, your, your soulmate will help you with that balancing and guide you to be, you know, real, that you can't just do everything. Like, you know, I, I can't just go tour the world in this and black and forget my family, you know. I can't, you know, be all hours up all night helping souls on the street when I've got my own now teenagers, you know, I've got my own, you know, I've just made a wedding this year already. Can't believe it. I've married off a child, you know, to, to a guy called Nachman, would you believe it? 
He's a photographer, Nachman Styles. And if you know him, Nachman Goldstein, you know him. He's a very good photographer. He's friends with like Schlepping Nacker's guys and the, the, that guy you had, the chef guy. He's friends with him. And um, anyway, but the point I is. I saw Schlepping Nachas after the show with, uh, with Rev Arush. Yeah. I saw them in Yerushalayim and they're like, you have no idea what we just did. I was like, I know what you just did. And he's like, we got Rav Arush to pull out a nana. <laughs> that was like, that's I, what they took away from me. That clip is, I didn't share it around because I didn't want it to go too crazy with the nana vibe. But bottom line, like it's it's out there and it's unbelievable. Like it just shows you Rav Arush's heart. That, there's nothing that... Connected to everyone. Yeah, there's nothing that's puzzle, nothing, everything. Like, you know, I used to ask him, you know, these more like, can, is it okay if there's mixed seating at the events, you know, in Miami and this and that, and like, you know, abler things, we need a mechitza, this and that. You know, we try, we do this, that. He was just want to get a muna to the, to the people. That's the, that's the avoider. Same, like I remember with Chabad as well, you know, they have their rules and their boundaries, but it's amazing the Asay Tob, what they're trying to get done, yeah? And that's what I think that, you see the light of Chabad and Bresov, even though I went to a Litvish Yeshiva, and even though I'm connected to mainstream Hasidus, but you see the light of Kirub coming out from Breslov and Chabad. It's awesome, you know. It's it's an inspiration to everyone else, including the the Yeshiva Shakirov organizations, which it's all changing now anyway. Everyone's working together, you know. Like uh, we went from Shlomo Katz last week to Aiton Katz. They're two very different lights, even though they're both brothers, um, but it, they work together, you know. Having Rav Simon Jacobson sit together with Rav Oresh was awesome. I'd love to have Y.Y. Jacobson sit with Rav Oresh, but having his brother Simon Jacobson or Simon Jacobson. Yeah, Simon Jacobson was awesome. Like having him sit there and talk to Rav Oresh and see how they went back and forth in Torah. It, it was an amazing class. And Mayor Kay, you know, an influencer. I'd love, to, I said to Mayor Kay, I want to bring in some non Jewish influencers. I want Lewis Howes, bring him in. If you've got connection to him, get him to come. I, I'm, and I'm, my wife will let me. That's the amazing thing. It's not like I'm working for an institute. Now, the question is, with women, that's a more, like, not simple, because Breslov is very into Shmir Sanayim. We have the same and, thing here. Huh? We have the same thing here. We talked about it when we started the show. Like, okay, women, that's like the, that's like the one thing that we agreed, like, for now, it's just a no-go. It's just a, it's a matter of comfortable being able to have an hour-long conversation and to laugh yeah. and to joke when you have your wife you know, sitting in the other room or my wife sitting at home. It's a bit weird. But yeah, I mean, I was on an hour podcast. I need to get out there. Yeah, I was on an hour podcast last that's week with a... The wife's doing a podcast. Yeah, no, that's true. I do think the women need to get more encouragement in the Jewish world to be more uh, empowered to get content out because the truth is, like, my wife, she has a, a Instagram and she's slowly starting to put stuff out there in her own pace and, and comfortability. And you can see from women, it, from my wife, for example, comes from a lot of Yerushalayim and, and Sneas. And it's a very like, a, it's a, from a very good place where what she's doing. Um, so, Baruch Hashem, and I, we have full blessings from Rav Oresh, Tom the Rebbe, to do this kind of thing. Um, and I was on a podcast for an hour last week with with uh, with a lady from America who I met through, thanks to this whole Corona challenge, I've been in Zoom communities, you know, on a weekly level, um, where there's all kinds of people there, and people are starting to see my energy and message, thank God, and they want to they wanna host me on their podcast, someone just tagged me, a really cool, like, black, black actress who, who tagged me, and it's sort of connected to this in black, and, like, things are linking up, like, there's, there's opportunities to really to make an impact. And the key is to remember, like everything we spoke about till now, that we're grounded with the light of Sadiqim. That was that's the key. That we're all, and we're, we're grounded with our as you so beautiful both of you put, your wives. You know, you have your, these holy Brevinsons that protect us and and remind us of what life's about, no matter how much we wanna go out in the world and do what we're doing. And uh if we keep that all in, you know, that full universal united experience in a healthy way, then I think we'll be much clearer. We'll be successful, and it will be part of the process to bring the Mashiach. You know, that's that's what we're. That's the I big goal. A, I, mean, I have a, a question for you because you've expressed how you. You, know, you worked in different companies here in Israel. You worked, you did the corporate America. You did all the Gashmi side. Yeah. And now, Baruch Hashem, it looks like things are coming together for you uh, through Ruchaniu to elevate all the tools that you've gained along that process. 
I too also worked in different companies, sales, um, executive assistant for CEOs yeah. of high techs, different things like that. And now I find myself in spots, which is Rashid Tevot, Tzachim Parnasat Amid. We always need money. Right? We always need Parnasat. There's not a lot of work up here. But now I have a, a, a baby that I care so much about, which is this podcast, right? That like I'm so invested in. I want it to be so successful. Um, and I'm really like turned on even more now to learn Torah. And I don't want to go work on some Gashmi company that, you know, that like has nothing to do with Torah. Like, so what, what kind of advice do you have for me? Because I'm really struggling with this right now recently um, where I got fired a few weeks ago, right? A month or so ago. And this is, this is the result of that getting fired. We started this podcast and I wouldn't be able to do it if it wasn't for that, right? So there's definitely a, a positivity in there. Of course, everything is good from Hashem. But like, what, what, what is the message of someone that's so passionate about something, but it doesn't necessarily add up financially? It doesn't necessarily, you know, bring the bread home. Is there any advice you have for me? Yeah, there's a lot of advice. I mean, it's, it's, we probably should have a private conversation at some point about it. Like, I'm happy to do that because it, it's something which should be done privately as well because there's always that personal aspect of what, where you're holding in your career and things like that. But in terms of my own experiences, you know, Nissan Black was, he was one of the people like pounding at my door, like, why are you doing this corporate American thing? Like, just scream to Hashem and get out of this. Yeah, that's what he said. To me. He was like, I thought he was crazy. You know, I can't, they're paying me every month. So, so you know, it's a job. So yeah, I have a job. I'm, I'm near my house. I can do it. I was online. And, you know, once in a while I have to go to the office in Beit Shemesh, not at the end of the world, and there's a Daf Yomi there and a, a Mincha, and, you know, there is some Ruchnius in these places, you know, uh, and meeting other Jews and working together with other people as well, not just Jews. I often was training a whole crew in Vegas as well, you know, non-Jewish people, and I really connected with them. It was really good fun talking to them and sharing my stories, their stories. It was, you know, there's always opportunities wherever you go, wherever you work for, and wherever you end up. But Nissan was like, you got to scream, man. You got to like get to that next level of like doing your mission. And like you were saying, being involved with work, but getting paid, but for your mission, for spirituality, for, for a larger picture and things. What I would say is practically as much as that was helpful when Nissan said, and I did scream and it did work, you know, I literally, I remember I was in my own office. I rented my own space. I could scream as much as I want, as long as the neighbors didn't knock on the door. And, and screaming to Hashem works, you know, that's what we know from, from when we go out in Mitzrayim, we all scream out, you know, on Seder night, please God, coming up. By the end of the we're going to say, Saka, we're going to scream, and we should scream. That's what the, the, the Hasidah, the, the Sadiq can bring down. It's just that night, it's a very important night to scream out to Hashem. Yeah, it's Hashem will answer all your prayers, as you said before. You have to, there's certain times of will. So you really have to put in that work and the prayer and Ravorish, for example, with his spodilis, the hours of his spodilis. Um, for me, I'm not so like, I'm not holding on that six hours and all that. Um, but from where I'm holding, I'd say on a practical level, there's the idea of also building your own brand. And that, that would connect into all the podcast people I mentioned before, Tom Bilyeu and Lewis Howes and these successful people, even... You know, there's there's one cool uh, from from a lady. Um, she made her own podcast. Um, I've forgotten her name. I always forget her name for some reason. But if not now, then when? And she got it from Pick Elvis. You know, <laughs> that's how she named her podcast. Yeah. So and she's very successful. That lady. And then then for example, uh, who else was I thinking? Uh, someone else came in my mind. Oh, Rich Roll. And there's a lot of podcasts out there. I don't agree with everything they say, but there's a Nakuda that you're asking on, that all these people are, were empowered to build their own brand and to leave the corporate structures and become, in a way, their own self-employed boss. Like, I always have that thing in my head, should I remain self-employed? Like, this year hasn't been such a big moneymaker in the self-employed world because, you know, the, the booking industry has been, you know, mostly online and it hasn't been what it was. So I have to still pay an account and I still have to have my own self-employed account and do all that. But... What, and my wife and myself, we always discuss it and I say, yeah, because we're leaving the door open for blessing. We're, we're creating room for our own abilities to, to provide a, a vessel for our own, own message and our own unique 
purpose in this world and it's to believe in yourself to believe that you this podcast is not just you know just a fun side project this is part of your journey to build your brand and in the economic world in the business world that's very respectful that you're building a brand and it's something which takes investment and a lot of passion and a lot of uh you know time and it and as long as your soulmate your partner in life is agreeable like me doing this now this is on my wife's time yeah you should be around and hanging around the house and helping the kids go to bed eventually and things like that but she understands that this is important as building our brand so if it's with your wife and together you're agreeable and you you know it's a journey together so with shalom bias and you know and belief in emuna in yourself Rav Sodek says that's even more important in a way Rav Orish said it as well he said it in one of our classes that it's even more important you believe in yourself even more than emuna in Hashem you have to really believe in yourself and so with tefillah and with emuna in yourself it's not easy I've had those hard times honestly where I was like what am I doing how can I leave corporate yeah but Hashem showed me time and time and again every time I left something thank God I wasn't fired so much but Every time I made that choice to move forward, that that place that I left within a year or so disappeared. Like that that reality wasn't there anyway. It was just a like the Baal Shem Tov says. Feeling I know where you work in Beit Shemesh. Yeah, so it's just like this dimion, you know. When you mean when you mean you say Amuna in yourself is more important than Hashem, you mean basically the reason you're probably saying that is because if you don't have Amuna in yourself, you cannot have Amuna in anyone else. Hundred percent. Hashem. Yeah, it's like it's like loving another person. You have to love yourself. Yeah. So it's very much to do. People miss that with Judaism. Like I, I did initially when I became about Shuvah, fire, learning, davening, like no time for myself. But that's the that's a big mistake Balit Shuvah make. You have to invest in yourself, and it's not it's not egoist. It's 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 not. Uh, it's, yeah, it's like you speak to a, like a real wise Chabadnik. You know, as much as they're most nefesh, you know, for like. Manis Friedman or Y.Y. Jackson, you'd speak to these real or Shai's Tav, these Chosheva, you know, I had this close to be involved with my Manis Friedman over a certain story, a video went viral, but it was in a not good way. And it was partly due to me because I videoed different parts of his class and they took a part of it and it was knocking him, yeah? And it was amazing his reaction. His reaction was back to me, I'm totally happy what happened, keep doing what you're doing. That was his message because in the end, however it works out, like it's always like people like this, they always understand that there's a bigger process going on and that they're part of a larger mission. And even if initially it looks not good, it's going to work out. And it did. Look, Romanus Freeman is probably the most successful online rabbi in the world now, probably. I think he's literally at the top in terms of even more than Ryway Jackson, in terms of his ability to impact and, you know, to get on things like he was on that that Peter Sanatello uh, YouTuber thing. I mean, that in itself is a whole new reality. There's this whole YouTuber world where suddenly some rabbis are getting pulled in. You know, that's amazing. Um, YouTubers are coming into Shabbos tables. And wait for uh, the next, for a big rabbi to come on Joe Rogan's podcast, like uh, Madison. Yeah, now, like Tim Ferriss had an interview. A hundred percent. Tim Ferriss had a beautiful, beautiful interview. I recommend to everyone for Rabbi Sachs. Awesome interview. Listen to that interview. Awesome. Tim Ferriss and Rabbi Sachs. Amazing. Rabbi Sachs was the top of communication before he passed away in terms. He, now, the, it, how can I go from Rabbi Sachs to Rabbi C. Meyer Zilberg to, you know, yes, I can. Because thank God I grew up in where I grew up. And I, I love Rabbi Sachs. I love, it's an awesome person. And I miss him tre- tremendously. It's such a loss that we don't have Rabbi Lord Sachs around he was a communicator, he was in the Lord, House of Lords, he was able to get up and, and unify, be a unifying voice. For my mission, my dream was to have this giant event, he was going to be the, the face of the rabbi world for me at that time, when I envisioned it. And now he's not here, so, you know, in a way, it, what it does, it puts it onto you and me, well, we've got to step up and be those voices of unity and communication and clarity, and ability to even influence the House of Lords to influence, you know, the American uh, politics to influence uh, Israeli politics, even, you know, as hard as that might be imagined. But we have the ability to do much more. President of Brazil. Yes, 
ambassadors of Brazil, amazing. Sign with these two mix, also these two worlds, because we are eventually allied to the nation. That's literally our mission, and that's yeah. what we want to do. What we all want to, like what you're seeing with the Unity uh, projects, like, and you're you're traveling, going everywhere. And when I saw the video with Peter Santanello and all these these series, it's like, wow, this is such a good sign for the times we're living in that this is happening right now. That you see these two worlds of the other nations of the world and the Jewish people, like coming together in a very positive way and uh, yeah we need a good pr also because we haven't had such good pr yeah there's yeah, a lot of work to do that project by himself wouldn't have taken off if it wasn't for peter like yeah. shlomi, yeah, shlomi reached bless. out to peter right yeah but if shlomi Sions would have done that by himself with just ami magazine it would never have ever done that it would never would have been a success we had shlomi Sions. i knew i sensed in him that he was going to be able to be one of these unifiers i uh, that's why i reached out to me he came to our Muna class and we thank God we have a connection. And he's, an, he's another person. He's, but th we are the new generation of influencers in the Jewish world. And we've got to do something about it. And we've got to empower our, our... I'm trying to empower my children to do it on their level. And to not, you know, to not get caught up with the negative voices, to really believe in our mission and do it. And really succeed. You know, to, to, to take your podcast to the next level whatever that means. And I'm happy I'm part of that journey now, really happy. And to just keep believing and generating a lot of good energy and you'll see there'll be miracles Hashem will provide and you'll have everything you'll need to be able to continue this and grow it. And, you know, you already told me before we started, it's starting to happen on a daily level, please God, you know. That's my next uh, project, which we should end off with. I just want to go because I have to get the kids to bed is United Souls. I have a book that I'm writing and I want it to be a series. I'm already speaking to some publishers and the first book will have to be me exclusively because I need to get my message out, my mission, get it all out on paper and I've done it, thank God. I've written an 80 page book called United Souls and the point is how does it relate to what we've been talking about because obviously the name but also the message is of the book is to bring unity into our daily practical life, that it shouldn't just be theoretical. Chesidus and all the beautiful books behind you should not just be theoretical, it has to impact our daily life. Like as the Chabad Rebbe said, what's the Ikka? No, you tell, tell me my friend, what's the main thing? Yeah, Ikka. Maisa, yeah. Yeah, Ikka. Maisa Ikka, this is it, we've got to make it, bring it into our reality, bring it into your how you make a living, Bring it into your Shalom bias, bring it into your relationship with your children, bring it into Svat, wherever you are, bring it into Jerusalem, you know, bring it into the Corona challenge. Everything has all the light of Torah. I like, by the way, how you say Corona challenge. I love that. Yeah, I don't call it crisis, it's a challenge. It's just an opportunity. And it's been an amazing opportunity. I've written a book. I never, I never had time to write a book. I took, thank God, one of the Zoom communities I'm part of that I never would have been on because I'd have been traveling and busy booking events. So I was in this opportunity to hear from writers of books and they, I got inspiration from them and I started night after night and my wife was falling asleep next to me and I'd be writing a book night after night and I, you know, paragraph after paragraph and you end up with a book. It wasn't like I had to like... You wouldn't have this podcast. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> exactly. This what we wouldn't. I wouldn't be doing these amuna classes. You know, they've been amazing, even better than our trips, in a way. We, I think, in some ways, you know, we're impacting more, even if we're not in front of people. But having the weekly structure of a class with famous people coming in and inspirational people and and new people, new talents. We've had some new musicians that people don't know so much about, and they get the opportunity to form in front of a larger crowd than they would otherwise and it's Joseph amazing. Daniel. Joseph Daniel, you know, D Dov Halperin, beautiful souls who are very talented and you know and they should be known about and you know more more than they, they are and Mordechai Ben Avram and you know Nissen Black of course we brought in Ben Blackwell he's a Hebrew Israelite um, you know all kinds of people have come to our studio Asaf Goren who was in LA you know, he's a, he's a... I have a catcher with us. He's, yeah. a, he's a crazy... Yeah, Jew. I love him. He's like the walking he, said, he put up a message about who should we vote for in the next election, yeah? So he put like something like number nine, silly, yeah? Like I'm making a joke. So I wrote number 10, Bardak. <laughs> you know who Bardak is. Tustus <laughs> Loyavo. 
<laughs> you gotta it's you gotta have simcha and you gotta enjoy I have a going away a, a going away message i know you have to go but um what would be your message for if you could please i'm asking you one for jews and one for non-jews to, both. yeah for both for jews for non-jews the unity is is real it's it's a flow in our life there's a unity flow in everything to see that divine flow, to see that divine flow from within, to see that divine flow in how you process your day, how you make panasa, everything has a flow. It doesn't just come whatever. And you have your ability to access that flow and to be inspirational and to be uplifted and to have energy. And even when you're feeling a bit more or less energized, but to remind yourself there's a flow and that things are good and Hashem's constantly creating the world again and again. And that, that divine flow is going to give me energy that I need to be able to do my mission and to empower others to do their mission and to ultimately do Hashem's larger mission. That's the kind of energy we need to approach our day, wake up in the morning and go to bed with, to experience and with our soulmates, that we're souls, we're not just husband, wife, there's a oneness in our relationship, there's a oneness with our children, there's a oneness in this podcast that we're doing this tonight, there's a flow, it's, it's to allow yourself to experience the unity. And to allow yourself to, to let go a little bit. You're not in control. It's okay. The corona thing has taught everybody that we're not in control. And then just to experience the divine flow. And that is relevant for a Jew who wants to learn Torah and Daven and connect to Hashem. To someone who wants to keep start keeping Shabbos or be Shomer Bris and Shmir Sanayim. And all the beautiful things that a Jew can do to, to give a good word to someone, a good eye. This is all part of the divine image that we're made in and to, to, to live it. And then the same way with the, the rest of humanity. Everyone in humanity has got made in the divine image and has the ability to tap in in their way to their unique mission and their unique light and to, to believe in themselves as well. And they have, they have beautiful things to do. And the more I meet people with this kind of mindset, and even growing up when I didn't know so much, but I was brothers and sisters of everybody. And to, like, to, to realize that, that we can come to to uni unity in the world. We don't have to stay in this exile anymore. And we don't have to give in to all the divisiveness. I'm writing this book to get rid of this divisive energy out there. That there is a soul level that will unite everybody. Everyone will understand the, the, the language of the soul. And that will unite everybody. It won't be any media getting in the way of that message. There won't be any technology getting in the way of that message. The souls are communicating. We're all uniting. Even if I'm not sitting with you in Sfat, I'm with you in Svat. We're, we're, we're united. That's the truth. That's it. Amazing. It's the beauty of technology. Baruch Hashem. We have the opportunity to sit here together tonight and talk to each other and have an awesome podcast. Baruch Hashem. Thank you. This was great. Thank, Thank you so Rebbe much. Thank you, Eliyahu Eliezer. Now you've gone up in my books as Rebbe because I learned a lot from you tonight. And, uh, and you're for sure in my books, from my personal life, fitting for that title. Uh, and I really, really want to appreciate it. This has been one of the most inspiring conversations we've had on the, on the podcast so far. And um, I got a lot out of it. I'm definitely going to take you up on that private conversation afterwards. Um, and I think there hopefully is a lot of potential there, um, even if it's just in, in motivation and, and inspiration. Thank you. I'm not coming as a rabbi, by the way. Like, when I, no, I know that. I know that. Yeah. Ellie Goldsmith. That's, that's it. Simple and learns from everyone um yeah where can people find uh, your stuff for people watching this so to connect to me it's easy um unity inspires projects uh united souls is the album and the podcast the unity flow podcast relationship flow podcast and amuna is our future brothers of israel podcast they're the three podcasts and um you know the all the other names you heard midnight rabbi ellie goes it's all googleable and You'll find oh, from there everything. The description also. Yeah, please go. <laughs> All right, thank you right. so much. Really appreciate it. Yeah, and I think we should really just believe in ourselves and get this message out there on all platforms. You know, don't don't hold back. You have an opportunity to post it on another place. Get it out there. Even TikTok, as silly as it is, it deserves a little bit of true content over there. You know. No, we are having uh, rabbis, especially during Svira in the three weeks, 
So there's definitely that option. We have Moshe Weinberger coming after Pesach, um, potentially Judah Michelle. Um, a few other local Rabbonim are interested and might work out. And, uh, you know, and then there's the three weeks as well. So, you know, there's options and opportunities. And hopefully, if, if it works out, we can do a collaborative project as well. Please, God. That's what I mean, with you guys. Yeah. Collaborative with you guys, for sure. It's all about collaboration. It's all about collaboration. I have a crazy Rav Aru story. I was going to maybe say it during this, but I'm not going to say it. But if there's any chance I can meet the Rav again, um, I know it's easy to meet the Rav. You just go to the Shur. Um, yeah. But uh, if we could ever do anything together, I'm thinking I'm going to save the story for then. Or when you come up to Tzfat, then we have you in and sit down properly. That's a shame. I'd love to come to Tzfat. I, I miss it very much and uh, ask permission from the wife that's uh, that's how you work i think the key is i have to bring i i think the key is i have to bring the wife will bring me because she's hopefully getting her driving sorted out and we'll go together and that would be the best way because it she could give me like she'll go shopping or something and i'll come hang out with you guys for half an hour now that's a shame there's a good rap I put up years ago from Ari Lesser, Gum Zula Tova. And we were all chewing gum. We were all chewing yeah. gum. Yeah. And Mazel Tov and your baby, my friend, should enjoy. Thank you, Mazel Tov. Enjoy those sleepless nights. Yeah, enjoy those sleepless nights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought they were kind of exaggerating. Exaggerating, but no, they were under exaggerating. <laughs> yeah. There's Thank no you. sleeping anymore, but it's okay. Now you're the midnight rabbi with the baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Thank you so much, Thank you, Chazak. Two chassids and a pod. Three chassids. <laughs> Thank you so much. Keep it going. Hi. Chaim, Chaim, Chaim Brocha.